Hey guys, welcome back. Last time we were able to organize our application using blueprints. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and set up a database that's going to be able to contain our data about users and also bookmarks. So we are going to be using Flask SQL Alchemy, which is an extension for Flask that adds support for SQL Alchemy. So SQL Alchemy facilitates connecting Python programs to different databases, and it can also be used as an object relational mapper which gives us a layer of abstraction when we are interacting with databases from our applications. So we don't have to write like the nitty gritty details of the SQL. So we can just focus on writing our Python code and move faster. So over here in our source, I'm going to create a file called database py. Now we need to first install Flask, Flask SQL Alchemy. Now to install this, we want to run pip install Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'm gonna stop my server arm here. Make sure you're still in your virtual environment and then run this installation command. So after it installs, the first thing you're going to need to do is to set up our DB and then tell SQL Alchemy on how to connect to it. So we're going to be using SQLite, which is a file-based relational database. So good thing with this is it comes bundled with uh, Python already, so we don't have to go through the process of installing Postgres or MySQL. And you will see that for the case we are going to be doing here, we can pretty much do it with any kind of database, but be sure to not use a file-based database when you're going to make a, a big app or the app you're gonna put to production. So over here, to get started, we want to import SQL Alchemy from Flask SQL Alchemy. So what we need to do here is we need to create our DB and then we set it to SQL Alchemy. And then once we create our DB, then on the DB we have, we have access to the model class that enables us to define how our relations would look like. So over here we can create a class. So this class we can call it user. So we're gonna now define our how our user relation is gonna be or our user table. So we're gonna inherit from db.model. Okay, so down in here now we can define our columns. So for the columns, we're gonna of course have an ID. So that will be like the unique identifier for each user. So here we can say db.column. So for the user, we want the user to be, so we want the ID to be an integer, so for example, one, two, three, four, five. So here we can do db.integer. And then we are going to set primary key equals true. And this is going to enable SQL argument to restrict this to only contain unique values. Also, it's going to, also since it's an ID, it's going to be assigned automatically by incrementing, by incrementing the ID of the previous object it's going to be managed behind the scenes for us. Then the next thing we're going to have is the username. So over here, we can specify a username. So the username is gonna be a string. So we can we have string. And then inside here, we can define how long we want it to be, like the maximum number. So let's have, so let's have our usernames to be less than 80. So it's not gonna be primary, but it's gonna be unique. So we don't want our users to have the same usernames. So next thing we're going to have to define is the email. So we also have to specify that this shouldn't be null. So we don't want to create a, a user without a name. So we can specify nullable because false. Okay. So let's also specify the email. So I'm going to change this one to email. So it's going to be a string, yes. Now an email might be longer. But let's just take our hours to 120. It should be unique. It also shouldn't be nullable. Let's also define the user's password. So for the password, it can be a string. We also have another type for text. So that allows you to store strings without having to limit them. So for the password, of course, we don't want it to be unique because you're going to be actually hashing it as you will see. We won't be storing it as a, like plain text. So let's also go ahead and define the created that. It's very important we get to know when this was created. So for the type, it's going to be a date time field. We want every time a user is created, we want to enter this automatically using the current date at that time, using the current date at that moment. So over here, we can also specify a default, and then we can set this one to date time dot now. So I'm going to import date time up here, import date time. Then we can set this one to date time dot now. Okay, yeah, so we we'll also have the updated that. So I'm gonna duplicate this. So this is gonna tra keep track of when this item was just updated. So updated that will be the date time 
but here we can specify on update and then on update we'll also be inserting in time at that point so one thing that we will most likely want to do is create a single representation a string representation of our model class so over here i'm going to have a tender repo method so for this one we're going to be returning self dot username so to make this one look better i'm going to use f strings here so i'm just going to do this then here i'm going to have user now we have this then for the dynamic variable you can put it in this curly brackets so this is how the class would look now we are going to be adding there some other relationships but let's first go and define our relation for the bookmarks so we're also going to have a class called bookmark now you notice that though we are naming our model classes we are just using the singular terms just like other python classes these are not exception they have to follow the standard convention of naming classes that's why we name it as a single entity so now let's go ahead and define how our bookmarks will be so first off we're going to have an id so the id is going to look similar to this i'm just going to bring this one in then the next thing we're going to have is uh, the body of a bookmark so someone can add some some details so body you can just get the text so let's make it nullable so if a user doesn't provide it the app shouldn't complain so let's also pick the url that is very important to us that is what makes our application work so for the url we will keep a text and we want it to always be there we are going to need to have a way of getting a short version a short url version of our main url so that is something we're going to be adding within our application so the user won't have to supply it but for the constraints here we're going to use a string and for this it's going to be a maximum of three characters so when we generate it we are going to always make sure it is three before we insert it here another thing we are going to define is the visits so we're also going to have to track how many times a bookmark was checked out so for the visits we can have db column it's going to be an integer let's set the default so default it's going to be zero now let's have the updated data and created that so they are going to be the same so i'm going to copy these and also bring them here so let's now talk a bit about relationships and how we can create a relationship between a user and a bookmark such that querying our records becomes more efficient so what we're going to do here on a bookmark we're also going to specify a user id and then this is going to be an integer field so it's here we can do db.integer we will also specify that it's going to be a foreign key so we'll do db.foreign key now when you do db.foreign key then you can specify the table that you're referencing in here and the column so since we are since we are referencing this class here we can go ahead and specify that we are referencing user then we can specify that this user id will be matched with a specific column on this class so that's going to be the id the id column so on here you can do a dot id now the next thing we're going to do is on the user class we're also going to define a relationship with the bookmarks so over here i'm going to have a bookmarks so for the bookmarks we're going to set that one to db with relationship so for the relationship then we can specify the class that we are uh, creating this relationship with so that's going to be the bookmark one and then over here i'm going to specify a keyword called backref then i'm going to set that one to user now this keyword here is just another way for defining a reverse relationship so this way we don't have to come on here and we specify that there is another relationship and this is going to take care of us being able to do bookmark bookmark dot user so just the same way we'll be able to do user dot bookmarks we can this allows us to now also be able to do bookmark dot then the what we specify here so now that we have that out of the way let's also have a repair method for our bookmark so we have a, a ripper then we just have bookmark we can just return anything here let's just get the id or the url that looks better so one thing we're going to need here is we're going to need the way of creating a short url from a url that is given to us now whenever an object is being created or when our class is being instantiated the constructor gets called so over here we're going to override dander in it now we are going to be taking in self and all the other keyword arguments now over here we are going to find a way of assigning a short url when this object is being created so here we're going to do self.shorturl 
equals so i'm gonna have a function called generate short url it could even be generate short characters because in essence we're actually getting the character so i'm gonna change this one to short characters so let's create this now since we are in a class we're gonna have to call it using self so we'll have def generate short characters so text and self just so it can access all these other members so thinking about how we are going to do it we are going to find a way of getting all the possible characters and picking random three from those possible characters and the ones we, we pick we need to make sure that we had not picked them before so first off we need to get our numbers from 0 to 9 now we can get numbers by using the string class so over here let me import string so import string so if i go down here now to get numbers from 0 to, to 9 with characters equals string then on the string we call digits so this is going to give us 0 1 2 up to 9 and then what i want us to do is is also add all our alphabet alphabet letters from a to z so we can get all the alphabet letters by using the by calling string dot ASCII letters on this very note i'm going to introduce you to the flask shell so with flask you can just run flask shell and that's going to take you to like a python shell but in here you can go ahead and you import everything in your app you interact with it as if as if it's a, re a real flask app being run so that's why so i'm going to import string just so we see how that works so if we do string dot digits you see we get zero to nine and now if we do string dot ask letters so let's just do ask letters you can see we have a to z and then we have the version where the the letters are and then we have the versions where the letters are packaged now for us to pick random three letters from this what we're gonna do is here we're gonna import random so and then we're gonna be using choice from random to pick them so down here i'm going to have pictures we'll set that one to random dot choices so if we do random dot choices then we can give it like where we want to pick from so we want to pick from characters and then we can pass another key for the weight so this so the key specifies how many we want to pick from there now we can do we want we can say we want to pick three so if i did this if i came here and imported random so if i import random down here and then i did random dot choices and then pass the let's just pass the the letters ask the ask letters so i'm gonna pass the min there so let's pass k equals three so when we do that you notice that it gives us a new list now what we want is to turn this now what we want is a way to turn this into a string and not a list so we can do that by using join so so we join by an empty string so we can do empty string dot join and then we can go ahead and join this so i'm gonna copy all this and uh, paste it in there and run this and now you can see that we get our three strings in a string format so that's what we're gonna do here so over here i'm gonna do this dot join then we're gonna join this so that's gonna give us our three strings now something we're gonna need to do this should be picked now something you're gonna need to do is make sure that this don't exist already in a db as our Otherwise, our link tracking may not work well. Over here, we're going to have a link that exists. So we're going to do a link. So we're going to set this one to self. And then we can access query when we are on a model. So self.query. And then we can do filter by. So here, we want to filter by this short URL. So before we insert the short URL, we want to make sure it's not there. So we can filter by short URL equals short URL equals the picked characters. Then we want to call first on it. It's going to return for us a varied bookmark, or it's going to return none if none exists. So here we can check if we have the link. So if we have the link, then we want to try getting another one. Then otherwise, our short URL will equal to the characters we just picked. So over here, we can have an else, and then we just return this. So if it exists, we are going to try to find it again and again until we get one that doesn't exist. So over here, we can just recall the same function. So we're going to do self dot generate short cases. And then it's going to retry until it gets a unique one. So now that we are done with this, we are pretty much done. So one thing we are going to need to do is specify 
a URI that we can give to SQL Alchemy so it can connect to it. So I'm going to go here in our Flask env. Now I'm going to the Flask env because working with the env might bring some issues on Windows. So I want to keep things in here, but be sure to change your database URI to a file you don't commit to, to git. So over here, I'm going to have export SQL, and then I'm going to set that one to a local SQLite path. And then we will put three slashes, and then we are going to have one called bookmarks.db. So once we define this, then we can go in our app. So we're going to go to our create. Then we are going to go to our factory function. So here, where we define the app config from, then we can go ahead and specify the SQL Alchemy URI. Then we are going to set that one to os.environ.get this. So we named ours as a, as SQL Alchemy DB URI. So that's the one we want to make sure we have here. So one thing I've noticed is we named our columns using a small letter. Now this should be a capital letter, not a small letter. So let's go ahead and fix that before we go any further. So I'm going to select every, every occurrence. Then I'm going to make sure that this is a capital C. And now the last thing we're going to need to do is register our DB with our app. So we are going to import our DB. So, so from src, the database, import DB. So down here, before we register our blueprints, then we can go ahead and run db dot db dot app equals app and then we want to do db dot init app then we specify our app just like this and now once we're done with this we can go ahead and set up our tables or set up our database to start working or accepting connections here i'm going to go back to the first shell so we'll do first shell and in here we can import our db so we can do from src.database import db so with db now we can call create all and when we do that and we do a db again you can see that now this has created a path inside our rest api source folder and it's called bookmarks.db so this is how you create tables by running create all now if you ever wanted to destroy all your tables you can just do that by doing db dot drop all like this but we want to create them so we'll run create all and make sure that things are good and now when we come back to our folder structure you can see that over here we have a bookmarks.db so if you have a sqlite explorer you can go ahead and you see our columns but now this is where it is and this is where it's going to live for now so that is going to do it for this video so in the next video we're going to start working with like registering the user and also to log in users and all that fun stuff. So thanks guys for watching. If this one helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next video.